is Maria Jalikar. Welcome to my show called Let's Talk About History. I'm here today with Norwich's city historian, Dale Plummer. We're going to be talking about the future of the Reed and Hughes building. And Dale, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. Mm -hmm. um, what is important about the Reed and Hughes building? Well, it's a significant building in the downtown. It's a very early department store. And as you know, uh, um, that's been an important part of our history, both locally and as a nation, uh, the department stores, which really r rose in the 19th century. Um, it also was innovative in its use of advertising. The first electric light in Norwich was installed outside of Reed and Hughes as a test in 1885. Mm -hmm. um, they even were the first to, in the area, to bring in goods by airplane, you know, special luxury orders, mm -hmm. things like that. So they were very innovative. But more than that, uh, when we did our historic and architectural survey of downtown Norwich mm -hmm. 35 years ago, um, you know, we identified those buildings which really contributed to the historic character of the downtown, and Reed and Hughes was one of those. So a couple of years later, in 1984, um, it was nominated, the downtown was nominated to the National Register and the State Register of Historic Places, and Reed and Hughes was listed as being one of the buildings that contributed to that. So it's, it's significant, it's historic, it's been listed on both the state and the national registers. It's eligible for tax credits. It for has been listed on the state. Historic register? Oh, yes. Oh, definitely. I didn't know that. Exactly. Even in the condition it's in? Um, n no, the condition doesn't really matter. I mean, the, the, it's historic, whether it's disheveled mm -hmm. or. In yeah. fact. And what year was it originally built? It was originally built in 1869. Mm -hmm. uh, it took the place of an earlier building, the Apollo building, which was destroyed by fire. And, um, so that was right after the Civil War. Right after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are photographs from, I think, the campaign of, oh, 1872, showing a uh, election banner for U.S. Grant stretched across between, I think, mm -hmm. the War Egan and the Reed and Hughes, mm -hmm. uh, right across the street. So mm -hmm. uh, it's been a part of the, the history of the city for a long time. Mm -hmm. And just as important, um, you know, it's a, it's a good example of um, a 19th century design by a mm -hmm. um, local architect. And it Who was the original architect of the Reed and Hughes building? Do you know? Um, not really sure who the original architect was. I know there was a uh, Finch out of Boston that did a lot of the urban architecture uh, he um, was the architect for the state capitol. Right. And it was be before that, there was farmers, rural, and right. people were beginning to become urbanized. Yes. Well, by the time the Reed and Hughes is built, we are very urbanized. You have a number of professional architects working in the area. Um, I think it was, um, oh, no. No, I can't recall the name of it, but it was a, a well-known architect who had studied in Chicago. Oh. Chicago was in 1898 when they remodeled the building and gave it its current appearance, mm -hmm. was sort of the center of the new architecture. Mm. Um, Frank Lloyd Wright came mm -hmm. out of uh, the Chicago area, uh, mm -hmm. Sullivan, a number of and others. That was right before the Art Deco period in yes, the 1920s. Yes, exactly. That period was around the Victorian period. This is right at the, uh, the, the 1898 remodeling was right at the end of the Victorian era, kind of the beginning of, of your modern era. So it's a, in some ways transitional between the two. Mm -hmm. And it uses a metal facade on mm -hmm. part of the building and then the older brick on the other section. 
but it, it's significant because it's part of the streetscape of the downtown. Mm. You know, it maintains that that row of buildings, that, you know, with the Chautauqua, the Warrigan, you know, the Strand Building, all the others there. The Shannon. The, the Shannon, yes, that's right. That that create um, an artificial landscape or streetscape. Mm -hmm. And if you took that building out, you would have a, a jagged hole like someone had knocked out your front teeth. Mm -hmm. would, would, which doesn't yeah. do any of our appearances no, any good. I agree with you. And if, if you notice, um, when you go through the city, take a walk through the city, you'll find that that's the only structure that needs work on it, repairs. Most of the other buildings in Norwich have all the uh, flat iron building, um, the Otis Library, well, the Warregan. Right, and the Warregan, of course, is right across the street. I think there are others that need work, but this is the most prominent mm -hmm. of the buildings downtown that needs work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the most noticeable, and it is owned by the city. Mm -hmm. So. You know, the opportunity is there for the city. The city controls the building. It owns the building, and that is why we at Norwich Heritage Trust are, are so concerned that this building be restored. And with the city owning it, I think the opportunity for that really needs to be created. The city needs to take a much more proactive role in seeing the building restored. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially, oh, excuse me. <laughs> What do you think would be good uh, for the building? What good would the building do if it was fixed? Well, the most viable use of the building would be for apartments, residential use on the upper floors. Um, you know, it could potentially fit 20 uh, units, perhaps uh, 21 um, of housing. And then on the first floor, you can have a commercial or a retail or an office use mm -hmm. um, so that it would bring more people into town. Mm -hmm. It would increase the amount of foot traffic uh, in town and, um, you know, just raise the general level of activity and mm -hmm. business downtown, which mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. What about demolishing the building? Um, what, well, first let me ask you, what are the advantages of fixing the building? Well, I think the advantages are, are, are many fold. As I was saying, it would really create more activity. It would bring people downtown to live um, and to work, uh, provide opportunities for businesses. But just as important, um, Tax, it would, right. it would, right, help the tax base, mm -hmm. not a huge amount, but at least modestly, uh, the um, utilities on the building, the water, the uh, electricity, the natural gas mm -hmm. used by the residents and the, um, mm -hmm. you know, commercial or retail use would go into the city coffers. And that's mm -hmm. a big advantage that mm -hmm. the city has because mm -hmm. it makes money off of mm -hmm. not just taxes, but utilities. Mm. And of course, um, you know, it also, and perhaps most importantly, it shows that the city is serious about revitalizing the downtown. Mm. You know, when you see the city go after property owners about blight, blighted conditions, mm -hmm. and complain that they're not maintaining their property properly, and yet the city itself is guilty of that. So it would help a tremendous amount in having to have the city actually practice what it preaches. Mm. Um, and in this case, the very best solution to eliminate blight is to take the building from you know what people conceive of as a dilapidated eyesore to a really stunningly mm. beautiful restored building. Mm. And once restored, you know, look at the War Eagan. Mm. People complained about the War Eagan for years. It was an eyesore mm -hmm. and so forth. And now it's one of the prized jewels of yes. the downtown. Yes. Uh, 
Um, an example of historic preservation is the Panema Mill. Yes. Anyone's from Norwich that's taken note of the construction that's being done on the um, Panema Mill, that's a perfect example yes. of, a great example of historic preservation. Exactly. Uh, the, you know, if, if you're interested in the historic preservation of architectural buildings, you know, I mean, what better example to preserve exactly architecture because the Panema Mill was known for being one of the largest cotton mills in the world in the 1800s. So, you know, we drive past it every day and we might take it for granted, but that is a real gem. Yes, and I think the, you know, the, the <laughs> whole reason for historic preservation or the full, whole justification for saving these buildings is not to create museums out of them, but to put them back into use for the benefit mm -hmm. of people as mm -hmm. residences, as stores, as mm -hmm. businesses, and find the best use that suits the particular building. In mm -hmm. the case of Panema, you know, uh, many, many apartment units. I think Just think of how beautiful it's going to be when you drive by there in a winter's night and you see lights and probably have a nice little parking lot with, you know, lights and it'll exactly. be beautiful once it's accomplished, the work's done. Well, it will be stunning. And I think the same thing is true of, of Reed and Hughes. Mm -hmm. One of the advantages that Reed and Hughes has in terms of uh, being converted to apartments is that Anyone living there is just a block or two away from the library, the mm -hmm. post office, mm -hmm. the city hall. There are some great restaurants downtown. Mm -hmm. um, so you're in a central location mm -hmm. with a lot of the services available so that you don't even have to drive. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, Panema will be um, spectacular. Um, yes, it will be. It, you know, to drive past it and you know, picture in your mind what it's going to look like when it is yes. done. It's just going to be beautiful to see. I think one of the advantages, both that and the um, um, uh, yes. Reed and Hughes has, yeah. are they're, they're located on the rivers. Yes. You know, so that people in yes. apartments will get a view out, mm -hmm. at least those windows facing mm -hmm. the, uh, the water, they'll have a wonderful mm -hmm. view. Beautiful view. Just like I noticed on um, Route 97, I think it is going, the Taffel Ockham Road, those yes. new apartments there, they have a beautiful view of the river there. Exactly. Mm. Have that whole impoundment or, or mill pond Seeing behind the sunrise the dam. come up over the river. Oh, yes. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Couldn't have picked a better spot for that. So I know you're all for, you know, the historic preservation and development in the city, the Reed and Hughes building, but what are your ideas on demolishing the Reed and Hughes building? Well, our belief is that this would be a terrible mistake on the part of the city. First of all, how much would it cost? 600,000, 700,000, 800,000, a million? No one's really sure until they, they do it. It's surrounded on three sides by other buildings, and you know the walls of those buildings were never intended to be exposed to the elements. Mm -hmm. So they'll have to shore those up, they'll have to waterproof them, they'll have to do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You'll have a, a hole in the ground where the basement is that will, would have to be filled in. Um, there's a, and you've got environmental uh, concerns, remediation of, of 